starting to feel like which is awesome. Um, it's nice to see the school so busy and alive and the fields being used after school so much. Um, tonight's meeting is probably going to be, um, at least the meeting portion of it will be a little bit on the shorter side. We're gonna try to um, get through the business relatively quickly so that we are able to break out into grade specific rooms to address any questions you may have about scheduling for next year. Um, so with that, I would love to invite Dr. Rachel Kelly to speak on behalf of the super superintendent's office. Thanks. Thanks, Emily. Good evening, everybody. I just wanted to uh, take a few minutes and talk about um, the school budget that uh, the board just approved for next year, and that will go before the voters on Tuesday, May 16th. Uh, we're very excited as a leadership team and as a faculty and the board as well, because we were able to add some really important positions um, to our district in this um, budget cycle and still stay below the cap. And those three new positions are a K-8 math coach, a district-wide school psychologist, as well as a new counselor who will dedicate their time to the ninth grade and helping to ensure that that transition to high school is a smooth one, as well as dedicate some of their time to our fifth grade to help them prepare for middle. So we're very excited about the prospect of next year's budget and we hope everybody comes out to vote. Thank you. Um, next, I'd like to invite Aaron Kind to give an update from the counseling department. Hi, thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, lots going on in counseling, including uh, some excitement about this new faculty member. Um, uh, so for the ninth graders, uh, we're kind of like wrapping up course selection with them, and, and hopefully there's some ninth grade parents on the call so we can kind of recap that process and, and highlight some things to think about. Uh, we're also going strong with our freshman transition program. I think next Friday, the students are going to watch a movie with their freshman transition groups. And uh, we have a little bracket challenge going on as to which movie they are going to watch. I think there might also be a family ID link circling to uh, you know sign your student out to, to go attend that. So please, um, please do that if you're a ninth grade parent. Uh, we just wrapped up some lessons with the 10th graders, the counselors did, and now the school psychologists are presenting to them in their English classes. Uh, the counselors spoke about kind of interest inventories and, and post high school planning. Uh, we also kind of gave them the keys to the kingdom, which is Maya Learning, which is our um, sort of new college search software, previously Naviance. We've been using Maya Learning, I'd say, for the past 18 months or so. Uh, an email went out to all the parents to access their portion of the account as well. If, if you didn't get that, please feel free to reach out to me or your child's counselor. Um, for 11th grade, uh, we are working on picking back up the junior workshops after spring break. An email will go out to students and parents uh, before break to just kind of highlight what's coming uh, once we return. And um, last but not least, this week uh, and next, and even actually last week, is a big week for the seniors that are still waiting for regular decision outcomes. Um, there's probably colleges releasing decisions as we speak. Um, and so, you know, I can't say enough about how proud we are um, of our seniors and how well they've done. And um, we look forward to hearing some more good news and some smiling faces in our office. Um, and uh, with that, if anybody has any questions, you can reach out to me, um, I guess, in the chat here or ask them now or obviously uh, email me at any time. Thank you. Yeah. Um, very exciting for the seniors. Um, Joe Haven, would you care to give an athletics update for us? Yes, uh, currently there is um, <clears throat> not much to um, update because we're only in our second week. Um, of the of the fall season and then first week for modified but we had our first boys lacrosse scrimmage today and games will start this weekend for all teams while they're provided um, and uh, once again our participation numbers are outstanding 
and we're really trying to get as many kids as we can participating, whether it's athletics or anything extracurricular, music, musicals, you know, band, whatever we can do to get them to do something great after school. So hopefully we're all working together, making sure kids get an opportunity to do extracurricular activities when uh, when they're not in session. And that's really it. Sorry, not, I don't have much more for you, but we just, like I said, we just started eight days ago, so not much new happening yet. Oh, good. Thank you. It's nice to see the fields being used um, and everybody outside. That's great. Thank you. Um, next it, next up is Eddie Lennon um, from the school board. Hey, everybody. Um, uh, real quickly, in addition to what Rachel mentioned about the new positions, we're super excited for that. Uh, it's going to be a great benefit to the kids and to the school. Um, and one other thing that I wanted to point out, we have our second DEI workshop on March 27th at 7 p.m. And that's going to be uh, held at the um, high school auditorium, uh, Rotunda Atrium. Um, so we had a really good turnout for the first one a couple of weeks ago. I think we probably had close to 30 people, maybe more in the crowd. Um, everybody spoke really passionately about the subject and what the school is already doing with the Bronx School Promise. And we are hoping that we can get another excellent turnout uh, at the follow-up workshop. So please mark your calendars, March 27th, 7 p.m. Uh, outside of the high school auditorium. Hope to see you guys all there. Um, looking forward to seeing everyone around town. That's all I got for you, Emily. Thank you. Thanks, Eddie. Um, and we, I would love to welcome Katrina Ney for the School Foundation. Great. Thanks, Emily. Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, just a very quick update tonight to share that the foundation's regular spring grant cycle is underway, and the board has received an array of applications in the arts, athletics, STEM, and health and wellness. The board will review the applications over the next two months and vote on them later this spring. Your donations make this grants program possible, so please consider making a gift if you have not already. Our goal is to achieve 100% participation from school families. And as always, please visit the foundation's website, bronxvilleschoolfoundation.org, to learn more about the foundation's latest work to support our children. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I can't wait to hear about those grants. It's always exciting to hear when they come out. Um, I'm going to give like a very, very brief update from the councils. I listed a lot of what's going on um, for you to take a look at on the agenda. So I won't go through most of them, but um, I did want to highlight some of the things that are going on this week. Um, Spring into the Arts is ongoing. Last week, it opened up with an open mic night and the kids were incredible. Um, it was a lovely reception at um, the movie theater and the kids are so talented and it was really nice to see them take the stage. Um, their artwork is displayed through town this week. So when you're out and about, make sure you swing by and take a look. Um, they're just beautiful, beautiful pieces. Um, tomorrow night is the school-wide PTA in conjunction with the foundation, I believe. Um, so it would be lovely to see all your faces in person in real time. It's at seven o'clock at the field club. Um, lots of information, um, but also just a, a fun night to see everybody. Um, let's see, the, we, the juniors are currently doing a fundraiser for a mock ACT and SAT that's starting this weekend. Um, and then, you know, it's just exciting to be in spring. We're doing prom preparations and it's car wash season. So on any given Saturday and Sunday, please swing by the elementary school canopy and get your car washed. Um, and that's all from me. I'm gonna hand it over to Ann. Thanks, Emily. Uh, I think a lot of what, uh, what needed to be updated has been updated. A couple of quick things. Uh, we have a lot of field trips. The the past few weeks, the upcoming couple of weeks, because we um, we have a field trip deadline of April 15th so that all students are back in their classes to prepare for AP exams at the beginning of May. So your child may be going to the Met or to the Lower East Side for a tour. Um, and I did wanna mention that we had a large group of students travel to Montreal with the French club this weekend and they had a phenomenal time. And that was another one of those events that hasn't happened, happened since prior to COVID. And it's really a great experience for the students who attend. So um, 
that was nice to see returning. And Ms. Gillen is working right now to set up uh, the French exchange for next year. So I'm hoping at the April board meeting, we'll have a proposal for that. And that's again, another really wonderful experience for our students that we would love to get back into our programs. Um, tonight, uh, we are going to have breakout rooms and uh, they are based on as a parent, what grade your child is in. And if you have children in multiple grades in the high school, you can choose which one you wanna to go to. And Aaron, Alyssa Levy and I will uh, be in each of those separately. And this was something that came up last year as a need, which was just some grade specific information, advice, opportunity for you to ask questions about course selection for your child. So we'll go over brief information. Aaron's gonna go over something like an overview right now. And then we'll go into more specifics in those grade specific breakout rooms. Of course, always you are welcome to call or email your child's guidance counselor. I'm also happy to answer scheduling questions. Um, I know things can be confusing. I've mentioned this before, my daughter's in ninth grade they don't have family meetings at the school she goes to. So I don't know a lot about the classes she's gonna be signing up for and I'm relying on her. So um, I would like a meeting like this at her school, but that's not happening. So from that perspective, I'll actually be talking to ninth grade parents tonight to try to give you information that may help you make good decisions with your child. So with that, um, unless there's any questions, I'm gonna have Aaron do a brief overview of things to consider in the scheduling process, and then we'll go into those breakout rooms. So if people have specific questions about particular grade level courses, we can answer them. Thanks, Ann. Do you wanna, you want me to share my screen or? You, um, yeah, okay. you can share so, yours. Okay, so just bear with me. Sorry, I have a lot going on. Um, everybody, and you can see this? Okay. Um, yes. yes. Okay. So uh, again, I when we have a few slides that are really like broad brush strokes, and then um, breakout rooms by you know rising tenth graders, rising eleventh graders, rising twelfth graders, and I hopefully if I did this right, you can just pick which room you want to go to. Uh, but just like some general statements, uh, first starting with the process, which is taking a few iterations, um, really just based on student feedback and maybe in one case uh, parent feedback and sort of looking around at sort of uh, other high schools and seeing what they do and, and sort of taking you know the good with that. Uh, first it starts with our grade level assemblies. So each grade uh, heard from curriculum leaders in the auditorium regarding what courses are available in each academic department and obviously the course expectations that go along with that. Um, I think those meetings were really um, impactful for the students to hear from the teachers about what the expectations are in some of, you know, the more advanced classes or AP classes, rather than, you know, students speaking with each other. And, and you know, sometimes some students uh, get advice from upperclassmen that isn't always accurate. So it's best always to hear from the teachers. Uh, and, and obviously following those, those meetings, we share that information with, uh, you know, grade level parents. Uh, I have those slides if anybody uh, didn't get a chance to see those. Um, so if you want to, you know, message me at some point, I can send them to you as well. Additionally, um, we've been using Infinite Campus to allow teachers to make recommendations for the following year. Uh, so information about where to find that is is in those slides as well. Uh, but there's a course recommendation, I guess, tab in Infinite Campus that you're able to view and the students are able to view. And within that, there's recommendations for what level of English for 11th and 12th graders, what level of history for 11th and 12th graders and 10th graders, actually. Um, there's recommendations about math courses. Uh, some of it is sort of student driven in terms of like what science class they wanna take. So for that department, we decided the recommendation by their current science teacher would be one to either take an advanced placement course or take one of our honors level courses or one of the elective level courses. Um, and there too is a good sort of checkpoint and a sounding board for our students to see like, oh, all right, these are the classes I wanna take. Let me see if my current teacher is recommending 
that I'm, I'm ready to do that. Um, as you all know, our students' appetite for some of these advanced or advanced placement courses is quite large. And sometimes our job as a counselor or maybe your job as a parent is to sort of help us sort of walk that back a little bit. Um, and these, you know, these first two pieces, the assembly and the teacher recommendations have been a good um, sort of checkpoint along the way to make sure students are, are signing up for the right classes. Uh, our next slide just kind of has an image of our course catalog, which is now video driven. Uh, I believe we adopted this from a neighboring school uh, coming out of COVID. We had, um, I, I guess our back to school night was, uh, you know, remote and all the teachers made videos about their courses and the students really in, appreciated it. And I think parents also found it really informative. And so there's a video for every class we offer on our course catalog website. And then lastly, uh, and possibly most importantly, a big piece about picking courses and myself and, and Alyssa and Anne will talk about this further in the breakout rooms is keeping in mind just like overall balance and wellness. And so we've created uh, some documents that outline homework expectations for each course and a, an additional document for students to kind of log how many hours they're doing different activities after school, during school, family commitments to make sure that there's enough time in the day that they can get everything done. Um, and again, oftentimes we find, and it's not necessarily grade specific, but students are just like over scheduled and over scheduling themselves. And we wanna just make sure that they literally have enough time in the day to do all their homework, eat three meals, get enough sleep, hang out with their friends, and participate in whatever activities they 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 choose to participate in. So keeping in mind just like their overall balance um, and their well-being is very important when picking classes. And again, just a little quick image. Um, the videos are great um, and also do a great job of like hearing from the teacher what you can expect versus hearing from your neighbor who took the class a few years ago and thought it was kind of easy. Um, so how do you make this decision? There's a lot of different things to, to factor in. Um, frankly, these are just some of them, um, and they're not necessarily in any number order, but these are just five of probably the more important pieces to keep in mind. Obviously, the rigor of the course, is it honors, is it advanced placement? Um, also, keeping in mind maybe like the level of the math class would be another piece of the rigor their performance in their current course, if you're getting a, a letter grade that you're not necessarily satisfied with, it might not be a good idea to take an even more challenging class in that in that academic department the following year. You, you know, and we will talk about this more in the breakout rooms, but your performance in the courses should lead to sort of a gateway as to whether or not you're taking a more advanced class the following year. There's obviously your study skills and habits. As I referenced, the teachers put together this sheet that outlines how much homework you can expect from any given class. Um, you know, you don't want to combine classes that are heavy on reading, right? Uh, we we talk a lot about this with the with the rising juniors, AP Bio, AP Environmental, AP US History, AP English Language. There's a lot of reading in those courses, and so it might not be the best idea to take them all at the same time. <laughs> um, obviously, this goes into the overall overall course load. And then, of course, as I mentioned, your commitments, um, both inside and outside of school. And that goes into family obligations, um, everything that's just taking time away from, from preparing for class. Um, and sort of like considering all of these things should help a student make a better informed decision about how rigorous their courses should be for any any given year. And then lastly, um, there are a few courses that require prerequisites. I think AP Art is probably one of the better ones, as would be any advanced placement world language course. So, and, and we'll, you know, you'll hear from Anne and Alyssa and myself about this in the smaller breakout rooms, but at some point, and I think it's probably most ideal going into junior year, so rising juniors, when you 
think about classes for junior year, you might also want to think about classes for senior year to map out what it is you want to do. Um, you know, as I said, we're currently meeting with ninth graders. Um, so rising 10th graders, a lot of them want to do a lot of different electives. Um, you know, we have psychology, philosophy, mythology, these computer science classes you're seeing on your screen. And like, you can't do all of them all at the same time. And so just like kind of mapping that out, if there's a number of courses you want to take, just sequencing them so you're not overwhelming yourself at in any one school year. There's obviously a lot of different things to consider as a 10th grader that are different from a 12th from a 12th grader and 11th grader, and you don't want to overwhelm yourself or overload yourself, as they say. It's this really delicate balance and line of like finding what's appropriately rigorous, but not overwhelming. Um, and ultimately, with the help of your child's counselor, um, you'll be able to kind of walk that line um, and, and find the appropriate courses for you. And those courses might be different than, than your neighbor, than your sibling, um, and everybody is gonna choose a different overall rigor of their courses, and that's gonna be okay for that student. And then of course, as I said, the balance. Um, so I'm just gonna close this. Uh, I just wanted to add two things yeah. while you close out of that, Aaron. Yeah. Um, one is that, we are a small school and uh, we offer a lot of different electives, but most of those electives are what are called singletons. They meet once. Uh, they're not two sections, three sections, four sections. In a big high school, it might be six sections. So we build the schedule. I build it actually each year based on student requests, which is to say that student requests drive our schedule. Um, which means two things. One, the more accurate the requests are to your guidance counselor, the more likely you are to schedule into those courses because the schedule is built based on those requests. But the second thing I want to remind everyone is that your child is likely not going to get everything they want, especially when they want four or five different electives. There are only eight different times that classes can meet. And again, many of them are singletons. So we do our best to get as many students who are interested in as many courses into them, but there are always students who do what we, we say conflict out. They, con they have to be in their math class and that's when the elective they want meets. You're, you're, the choice is not the elective, it's the math class. So just be aware going into this that you're gonna put forth Actually, your child's going to put forth their most interesting, exciting courses. We're going to do our best, and I try to do this mid to late May, to build the schedule that accommodates as many as the, of those requests as possible. And then you will hear from your counselor about conflicts and choices. And yes, students need to make choices. They can't do everything, both because it won't fit and also sometimes it's not a good idea to try to do everything. It's important to focus on what's most important and have the time to do that well. So just be aware that once the schedule gets built, you will hear, your child will hear from their counselor saying, uh, digital photo meets at the same time as philosophy, which one do you wanna take? Or um, AP art history is meeting at this time. I know you really want to take it. You need another course in performing arts. Here's the one that'll fit in your schedule. May not be the one that your child thought of, but that's the one they might need to take. And by the way, if your child has not taken health and is not a ninth grader, because all ninth graders are in health, that is a graduation requirement. And we will be putting kids in health next year even if it conflicts them out of things they're really interested in because we have to prioritize graduation requirements. So a lot of different things go into this. It's a giant puzzle. We put it together every year. We do our best. And at the end of the day, it ends up working out for our kids. So um, I think it's a good time to go into breakout rooms and answer specific grade level questions for people. And again, if you don't get your question answered or you're in a different breakout room, then because you have multiple children, just get in touch with us. We're happy to answer questions.
So you should be able to down at the bottom of your screen open up the yeah the breakout room tab and there should be three different rooms available rising 10 11 and 12. Yes. 